Um, who has been out on the turning so far? Can you stand up if you have? Okay. I just want to encourage you, church. Now, I want you to think, if you've been out, how many people you led to Jesus in the times you've been out in total, okay? So uh, do a bit of maths. If you're not good at maths, just make it up, okay? okay. Uh, I like to be at home when I preach, so I brought a plant in with me. Okay. Right, okay, so Lorna. I think six. Six, six. Sheba. Four. That's ten. Alison. Three. That's uh, twelve. <laughs> Two. That's fourteen. One. That's thirteen. I was on the Alison when I did three. What? I was never good at maths. I've got CEC grade five. I haven't led anybody to Jesus, but I've prayed with a lot of people. How many people did you pray with? Uh, about 10. Excellent stuff. What, what number did I get up to? 15. 15. All right, okay. Go around there. Okay. Right. Your name is? <laughs> Sorry. Four. Four. Uh, have I left anyone out? I, myself. Um, so, just say, the people standing up, they have led over 20 people to Jesus in the last three or four weeks in going out in the streets of Greenford. Oh, come on. Let's have a bit more than that. What is wrong with you, church, eh? People have changed their life, and they're saved now. Isn't that good news? Yes. So, I also want to encourage you. You can sit. You know, stay be standing throughout the whole sermon. Now you can sit. You can sit. You can sit down. You can sit down. But I must want to encourage you. Something is happening in the spiritual atmosphere. Something's changed. You know, miraculously, in terms of what's going on. And if you ask those same people. When was the last time they led people to Jesus before that day they led them during that turning? It would have been quite a long time ago for most people, yeah? So let me encourage you. Let me encourage you to be involved in November when we go out again. Just one hour on a Saturday, a bit of time with God, it, just soaking in his presence. But it is so powerful. Do you want to take over? The, do, you want to, do you want to preach? Do you want to preach? You're as bad as Carol Cadman, you are. There is no just. There is no... You're, you're correct. You're correct. In my culture, it's, it's a, it means more. Right. Okay, right, okay. We're not just... To, we're just going to read the Bible now, okay? Just to wind him up. Right, if you turn to John chapter 15... It says these words, verses 1 to 8. I am the true grapevine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't bear fruit, and he prunes the branches that do bear fruit so they would be more fruitful. You've already been pruned and purified by the message I've given you. Remain in me, and I'll remain in you, for a branch cannot produce fruit if it's, if it's severed from the vine, and you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. Yes, I am the vine. You are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. But if you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be granted you. When you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. This brings me great glory to my Father. At the end of this month, we will have left the EU. 
Because Brexit's going to happen, isn't it? Of course it's going to happen. Don't you think so? Uh, it's, uh, look what's happened. There's chaos in the room. I wonder where that came from. Okay, right, so the thing about it is there is no sure hope of where we're going, is there? There is no sure hope whether we're going to get Brexit at the end of this month or if we're going to get it at all or whenever we're going to get it. And there is such an uncertainty in the world we live in, people need true hope. Yeah? They need true hope. And true hope can't be found in money. True hope can't be found in relationships. True hope can't be found in the job you've got. It is found only in one place only, and that is the person of Jesus. Now, these people who've been out in the streets evangelizing have given true hope, true meaning to life, to their life around them. And the thing about it is, you know, we try and get hope in a limited time on this earth when we can get eternal hope for an eternity in heaven. Now, let me ask you a quick question, okay? This is one of the questions you've heard before because we've gone through the whole script with what we do out in the streets. First of all, God has got a great plan for you, and God loves each of you in this room. But if I was to ask you one question now, if you were to die today, how sure would you be that you'll go to heaven? If you were to die today, how sure would you be to go to heaven? I want you to think about that. We'll come back to that later on. But that's the type of questions we're asking on the streets. And people are unsure. People, some people are sure. Some people, 50%, 30%. But we'll come back to that in a minute. It's great when the iPad freezes, isn't it? Right. Okay. Hillary Clinton stated this. Powerful forces are threatening to pull us apart. Powerful forces are threatening to pull us apart. And let me remind you that we live in a world where there is a continual, continual spiritual battle going on as we speak now. There's a battle going on which we are very much involved in. And uh, we have something which is so powerful, it is life-changing. Um, Keith, can you be my assistant? I'm going to stand here for some reason. <laughs> he's, he's still taller than me. Oh, no, no, you stay there. Stay there. Stay there. How are you doing down there? Now I know what it looks like when you speak to me. <laughs> How's it down there? Oh, okay, right. In my pocket, I've got the cure for everything in this earth which can kill human beings. It's called paracetamol E. Okay? What are you going to do with it? Um... I'm going to tell everybody about it because I got a lot of people who could benefit from this. I'll start. Should I have some? Have you got a headache? No. No, but don't take any then. Does it cure tiredness? It does everything. It does everything. Everything. So let me ask you a question, uh, church. You can sit down now. <laughs> okay. Let me ask you a question, church. If you had the cure for anything in this world, which will heal people, what would you do about it? You'd tell them. You'd tell them. Now, there's a big, massive epidemic in this world. Stand up if you're alive. If you're able to. Stand up if you're alive. Are you alive? Yes. Well, stand up if you're alive. Let me tell you one thing for certainty. You're all going to die. You're all going to die in your life one day. Yeah? Every single one of you. Okay? But Jesus is the cure for death's sting. He's the only cure. I've not even gone into the sermon stuff yet. 
He's the only cure to death's sting. No other way, no other person but Jesus. He is the person who forgives us of our sins. Now, all around us in this world, we have, who's her, who knows what death row is, yeah? You can sit down now if you want to, if, you, if you're able to. You know, you know what death row is? So, the um, walk from death row to the um, chair or wherever it is, is called dead man walking, yeah? Because you're, you're going to die very soon. All around us, there are dead people walking. But we have the powerful answer for life's biggest answer and mystery, what happens when we die. We have it. And we seem to keep it to ourselves. Jesus is the only way, the only person who gives us access to heaven through his death on that cross. And you have it. You have the answer. Park that thought. We'll come back to that in a minute. In this passage, Jesus says, I am the true vine. Now, if you link that to uh, John chapter 14, verse 6, says, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So what does that mean? Is there any other way to God? There is no other way. Money can't bring you closer to God. Uh, any other religion can, take you, can get you closer to God. It's only, only through Jesus. So part of his spiritual warfare, the enemy and mankind, because it's not all only Satan, it's mankind as well. They create things to uh, go further away from God. They've created other ways in which they think they can get to God. And you have the paracetamol. You have the answer. You have the truth. He is the truth. He is the true, true way. He is the only way to what sin does to us. So what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? And, you know, it's not only the fact that he's the only way to get in a heavenly inheritance. You know what's really interesting? Is when we was out in the streets, we met some people who would say to them, to us, well, I think about 80%, 80%, I've got a chance of going to heaven. And I said, why 80%? Well, I've got Jesus in my life, but I've done this wrong, I've done that wrong. I'm thinking, you know, early on when I asked you that question, what's your answer to that question about death? If you were to die today and, you were go, and your assurance of going to heaven, what would it be? A hundred percent. Because the Bible says, you know, I've died for you. So you, you you've died Jesus in your life. If you now in your life, he will set you free and you have eternal life, yeah? It's not, there's no doubt. There's no doubt at all, yeah? But some people in this room, even though you've accepted Jesus in your life, there is an uncertainty there still. And there shouldn't be an uncertainty. And there's people on the street we met who were definitely Christians, but they had uncertainty of where they're going to go when they die. And we need to realize our identity in Jesus, that we are totally set free, and that we know where we're going. Amen? There is an invisible battle going on in which the enemy would do anything to deceive us of the truth of who we are in God. And the thing about it is, we are children of God in that comes a heavenly, a heavenly inheritance for sure. No doubt about that at all. It says this, he cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't bear fruit. What do you think is the fruit he's talking about? That's a question for you to answer. What is the fruit he's talking about? 
fruits of the Holy Spirit. Okay, anything else? That's, that's a good answer. Anything else? In Matthew, whether we like it or not, we're told that there's a commission and we have to say that we believe in Jesus Christ and who he is, so we have to pass on the message of who Jesus is. And that means we have to share the good news of God. So fruit as in new uh, well, people coming to... F okay. Anyone else? Do you want, do you want to add anything to this uh, Pastor Bovin as you added before? No? I won't get you involved. Carry on on PA, thank you. Right. Okay, in, in front of you, this is a ficus benjamina, okay? Looked that up yesterday. I'm going to put this down. I'm going to do a demonstration. About 30 years ago, I was at Auntie Jo Maple's house, and she had one of these, and I took two pieces of leaf like this, okay, and planted it in a pot. 32 years later, this is what you got. This is my first experience of gardening, yeah? Okay, come and say whoa or something. Okay, but as you can see, so if someone wants to try this at home later, like Blue Peter, you've got, you've got two little leaves there you can take home with you later. The thing about it is, now and again, I get a bit of dead wood, which is doing nothing. A bit there. I'll come there, actually more than that. I'm doing a demonstration here. A bit there. Right. Who know what the word grafted means? Graft. I was, oh, it's the first time you've spoken this morning, Carol. I'm surprised. I've got a cold. It means um, uh, uh, made one with something else, you know, joined together with. That's very good, very good. I like that. Okay. So it says this, he cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't bear fruit. And uh, you think about it, okay? Jesus is the true vine, yeah? If we become a Christian, we become part of that vine and become part of that, uh, that bush and, be, and we become part of who he is, yeah? But, you know, coming to church on a Sunday or doing good things, as you may think, you may think you're on that vine. You may try and attach yourself to that vine. But that's not going to do anything. Coming here every Sunday isn't going to get you closer to Jesus. Going to McDonald's and you go there doesn't make you a hamburger, does it? Coming to church on a Sunday doesn't make you a Christian. And many people come here or go to other churches every single week, enjoying the meeting, enjoying what's being preached, and they think they're right with God. And they think they're part of that vine. You are part of that vine. But when you look closely, there's no fruit on that vine. So what happens to that bit of wood? It gets cut off. It gets cut off. And you know, part of being of Jesus' vine is being true to what he says and being obedient to his word. So fruitfulness is the way we live our lives. Fruitfulness means we allow Jesus in our lives and we live for him. We live to what his word says. 
And if we don't do that, we're going to be cut off. I mean, a great example is this. Who's got rose bushes in their garden? You know what a sucker is? A sucker is a, is, um, a branch which comes up from the root system. It looks like it's part of the actual um, uh, rose, but it's not. And it, it sucks up the energy of the actual plant. You've got to cut it off. You've got to cut it off. Okay? And what happens is that people who uh, pretend to be Jesus followers, they're wasting their time. They need to get right with God and sort themselves out because they're going to be cut off. I know I'm being strong, but it's true. You've got to follow what Jesus says. Acts 2, 38 says, Repent, believe, and be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. Repeat after me when it says, Repent, we believe, and be baptized to the, for the forgiveness of your sins. So it's not repent and believe for the forgiveness of your sins. What does it say? Repent, believe, and be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you're assured of your faith in God, yeah? It goes on. And he prunes the branches that do bear fruit so they produce even more fruit. Now, if I do a little snip in certain areas of this uh, Ficus Benjamina, let's do, it, let's do a couple, shall we? If I snip, say, I've done that already, that one. If I snip, say, there... Wait a few minutes. Oh, no. It takes a little time. <coughs> what happens is that that's going to bush out now. That's going to bush out and grow even more stronger and do more things to it. If you look closely here, there's, you can see where it's grafted as well, funny enough. So uh, there's, there's quite a few things there. And you'll see wired bits of... Uh, you see where I've wired it to actually um, manipulate the actual... Uh, branches. And the thing about it is, is that when we are followers of Jesus, God wants the best for us, doesn't he? So we may go through difficulties in life. And, you know, I can assure you we all go through difficulties in life. And God uses those moments and other situations for us to grow in who we are in God. And in, in doing that, we become more and more fruitful and more like him in who we are in, in Jesus. And, you know, it is so important to be embedded in Jesus. It says in John 6.35, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me will, shall never thirst. While we're connected to these branches, we are being fed Fed, fed by Jesus. If we're not in that situation, what's going to happen? We're just going to wither away. We need to be within him. Now let me remind you of who you are. It says in John 15, 3, you are already... Uh, you have already been pruned and purified by the message I've given you. If you go back two chapters, it talks about Jesus washing the feet of the disciples, which is symbolic of our purity in Jesus, of us being cleaned by Jesus. And that role is usually done by servants in the house. But do you realize what happens in, 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 in the Mediterranean? You're walking around with your, with your sandals on uh, or barefoot. The amount of dirt and rubbish you're picking up on your feet. And Jesus just washes it off his disciples' feet. The amount of rubbish and baggage we pick up in life. Jesus forgives us and cleans us from that baggage. 
and helps us through that baggage. By the way, I went to Tesco's yesterday. I picked up a bag of potatoes. I went to the, to the till. And he said to me, do you want a, a bag to go with it? I said to him, it comes with a free bag with the potatoes, isn't it? It's in a bag. All the baggage we pick up because of sin is forgiven. We're pure. We are living a life eternity with him. Remember your identity. Remember who you are. Remember what you have. Remember the cure you have which can change the world around us. Jesus is the only person who gives us forgiveness for sins and gives us access to God. We have an, an heavenly inheritance. It says, hey, remain in me and I will remain in you. John 8, 12 says this, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. It also says in Joshua chapter 1, meditate on, this, on these words day and night, so you'll be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then you will prosper and succeed in all you do. This tree here, will only succeed if it's watered and where it's located in the house. If it's located in a dark, dark place, okay, it's going to die. The leaves will just fall off it, yeah? It's got to be where the light is, yeah? And the same with us. We've got to center ourselves and locate ourselves in Jesus. We need to be strong in his word. But also, when we went out on the streets each week, each, what did we do? We spent time basking in his presence the night before. Just spending time worshipping him. Just doing nothing, or, nothing but listening and worshipping him. And when you're in his presence, he fills you. When you get filled, he does things through you. And as well as that, is soaking in his word. Also, another thing is important is being part of a body, which you are in this church here. But also accountability as well. So you've got friends around you you can rub off on in terms of who you are in Jesus and encourage and spur each other on. Remaining in Jesus is so important. It goes on. For a branch cannot bear fruit if, it is sev if it's severed from the vine. And you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. We have the great cure, church. And it's the gospel message of Jesus. And friends, family, neighbors, people around you need to hear this message. Because it's a life-changing message which changes people's lives for eternity. And, uh, you know, part of uh, the turning, it goes through what makes us fearful, what makes us not share our faith. I, haven't, I left the script up there, but some of it is fear. Fear to share our faith. Some of it is, have I got enough information? But whatever it is, Jesus died for you. Jesus loves you. Jesus wants to make a change in other people's lives around you. And believe me, this is the year, there's not much left of it, but this year and next year and the years to come, this is the years where we're going to see amazing things happening in terms of the kingdom of God. We saw people healed on the streets you know, over the last uh, couple of weeks. Uh, we've seen people in other churches see people's arms, actually, which couldn't be used before, used again. 
So things are happening in a powerful way. And, you know, we are in a warfare in which we're going to engage in and there's going to be all sorts of things going on in the spiritual realm. And we need to be part of it, every one of us. John 15, 5. Yes, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. In a nutshell, without Jesus, we can do nothing. Without Jesus, we can do everything. With Jesus, we can do everything. With Jesus, we can do everything. Without him, we can do nothing. So basically, the whole point of living on this planet is for one reason. It's to know the living God. And out of that comes true life. Until we know Jesus, we are basically living half a life. Isn't it, isn't it amazing? Isn't it amazing knowing God, that you can talk to him, you can spend time with him? I mean, we've heard about Emerus, which is, which is sad news, but also it's a celebration of life. We heard about Caleb a couple of weeks ago, who died very young, but it's also a celebration of life. So I'll tell you why it's a celebration of life. They were believers. They were believers. They knew Jesus. We know where they're going. How many funerals are you going to go to where they've not heard the message? Yeah? Yeah? We're here about saving lives. There's an epidemic out there. We've got the answer. Let's change the world around us. Let's tell them about Jesus. Let's tell them about the truth, the only, only way. John 11, 25, 26 says, I am the resurrection and the life. Who believes in me? Though that he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? I was in Jamaica two years ago, speaking to a person on the resort for the whole week. And um, he has just come out of prison for killing someone. And... Um, we chatted and chatted and chatted over the whole week. And before I left, he came to Jesus. Nothing, nothing can separate you from the love of God. Nothing what you've done in your life can separate you from the love of God. Everything is forgivable if you come to Jesus. This guy was a murderer. Uh, he now, uh, I know, is in Jamaica. Uh, he's got his own business now. And he's, he's enjoying Jesus, enjoying church, and he's a changed person. That's just one person. In this room, how many of you in this room? You reckon about 80 people, 90 people? So just see what we can do this year. Pray for one or two people. See them come to faith. Yeah. I just want to confirm this because I went to Corfu last week. And every morning when I woke up, before getting out of bed... I worship the Lord, and every day God used me to speak a word of how good and how God loves, and how God loves them, and every day God used me to plant a seed into people, and I had people come up to me at the end, and I had a message also from somebody when I got back said, it has changed their lives, they've made them look at their lives, made them look at God, and I had what you just said just backs it up because I've had believers who said they didn't know that they were they weren't sure they weren't were going to go to heaven, yeah. and just having that word spoken to them, and knowing it that they were secure, yeah. they said it just made such a difference to their lives. So we are here to yeah. speak the word of God to people yeah. and give them hope. It's only the true hope we have. It's the only true hope we have. 15 verse 7. I'm going to finish here in a minute because we're getting on. 
and, and this is so powerful. This is so powerful. If you remain in me, do you want, who wants a powerful prayer life? Who wants a powerful prayer life where you see things happen, yeah? Oh, come on. Don't you all want that? Well, put your hand up then. Only half the congregation want it. Okay, okay, all right. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it be given you. If you remain in me, you, you got something else to say? No, okay, okay. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it be given you. And simply what it means is that if you are part, if you are part of this vine, if you are listening to Jesus, if you're spending time with God, the things you're going to pray out, which is fruit in itself, will be answered. Because you'll be praying like God is praying. You'll be praying like Jesus is praying. You'll be praying the words out as if Jesus is praying out himself because he's, you're part of that vine. And, you know... We have unsuccessful prayer lives because we're praying out of God's will, yeah? When we're praying in God's will because we're listening to God and we are, we are grounded in God, we're going to pray things and we're going to see things happen, yeah? Who wants that? Oh, three of you. Okay, great. We all want that, don't we? We all want that. So again, it means rooted, rooted in God's word. It means rooted in worship. It means spending time in his presence. You're then filled with the spirit of God. You know, one thing we haven't mentioned yet is the Holy Spirit. You know, the Holy Spirit fills us. He, he becomes part of us when we become a Christian, and he sets us free. He gives us the ability to be who we are in God, yeah? Let's stand, shall we? Let's stand. If you read further on in that passage, it talks about the greatest thing you can give someone, which is love. Which is love. God's love flowing through you to each other and to other people. If you go into my garden during the summer, during the summer we have five different roses in different parts of the garden. If you walk in that garden, you'll smell different fragrances wherever you are. All over, that, all over that garden. And what we have here is people who love Jesus, yeah? And you all are giving a fragrance out wherever you are. If you are spending time with him, if you're with him. And you are changing the atmosphere wherever you are, yeah? Because of who you are in God. Let me reassure you that if you allow Jesus to be the center of your life, if you are living for him, there's no doubt you're going to go to heaven. When I became a Christian, I was baptised, yeah? Right? I pray every day, for half an hour every morning, I speak to God. Right? And God has helped me through all my woes and my sorrows. The reason I'm bringing this up is because also as well, because I've been faithful to God for seven or eight years now, yeah? God has given me gifts. One of them is to speak in tongues. He's given me all, such many things that have made me so happy. And it's just got me through the bad times in my life. And I'm so, so grateful to God. Amen, amen. That leads to another thing. We're in power. We've got gifts of the spirits, haven't we? So we've got the ability and the power of the Holy Spirit going through us as well. But listen, guys. You have a certainty in your identity where you're going. You're going to go to heaven. Others haven't. So I just want you in your own space just to think of people around you who needs Jesus and lift them up to God now. And I'm going to pray over you as well that uh, God's spirit that falls upon you as I speak as well. Let's think about people around you. Think about them who needs that message. Let's ask people that general question. You know, that general question. You know, God loves you. God has a purpose for your life. If you were to die today, how assured would you be of going to heaven? And then give them the answer. It's through Jesus, yeah? Father God, pour
pour your spirit upon each person now. Equip them, Father. Equip them now with your spirit, Father. Help them to know their true identity in you. And with that comes a an, an, an heavenly inheritance, Father, which is assured, which is not 50%, but 100%, Father. But I pray that wherever we walk, wherever we talk, wherever we do, we are giving the essence of you to people around us, Father. And help us do the greatest thing, which, which is spoken about later on in that chapter, about loving each other and showing love to people around us. We're not to debate or argue who we are in Jesus. We're to live it and to proclaim it, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. We do hope you've enjoyed and benefited from this presentation. To learn more about what the Bible teaches us and how to apply this to our everyday lives, check out our biblical teaching videos at gbcweb.tv.